Hell yeah. Today I'm filming the old mining go. town Ow. of Cerro Gordo. Near nice Death shot, Valley in Doc. California. Thanks. Now back T in the day, this was a rough place. Your quintessential old west town. A disagreeable burg full of stout, warm-hearted, go-ahead men who were tearing fortunes out of the bowels of mm. the earth. So naturally, my question is, what did these bowel-tearing men like to eat? Well, one popular I know where meal Sarah was Gordo biscuits is. and gravy, which I'm making mm. using a recipe from 1881. Ooh. So thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video yeah. as we oh, eat yeah. like an old West miner. This time on the How Tasting to Drink Christmas. vid on Red Dead Redemption 2. I'll check that out, King, for sure. Yeah. We'll probably rap stream with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now back in the late 19th, I used to go hiking up there when century, I was a kid. Was nice. A thriving community nice, with a number Very of cool. saloons, cool. restaurants, dance halls, hotels, and other businesses, all catering to the needs of the miners who were <laughs> extracting men silver can be and lead things, in the surrounding oh, no. mountains. Oh, now, no. Now, whether they were coming into town to eat or mm -hmm. if they were staying out by the mounds and making themselves a good meal, Ooh. they relied basically yeah. on the three Bs. Beans, beans, bacon, bacon and, and biscuits. biscuits. Yep, there and it last is. Last week I made the beans and bacon, so this week I'm making biscuits. <laughs> there it the is. Biscuits. Now sometimes they would use sourdough to make biscuits. My southern heart almost leapt out of its chest. Happens every time I hear biscuits and gravy. Of yeah. Cream tartar and celeritus. Celeritus being a salty form of <sighs> baking soda. Now at that time there were not a lot of cookbooks coming out of mm -hmm. the American West, but. I actually think I found kind of the perfect one for this. Because really? This mining town was said to have basically. Biscuits and gravy, goddamn, my South Carolina's so coming I'm out. <laughs> from Los Angeles cookery from 1881. Cream oh. of tartar biscuits, Mrs. Milliken. One quart of flour, three uh -huh. heaping teaspoonfuls uh -huh. of pure cream of tartar, uh -huh. a piece of butter, two thirds the size of an egg, well worked the size of an flour, egg. one heaping teaspoonful of Babbitt's celerity. What are you feeding your chickens? In sweet milk. Make the dough as soft as can be kneaded conveniently. Clearly, Roll this is nostalgia for a few, few people here. I can see that, Tapper, yeah. Butter. Now, there's nothing in this recipe that they wouldn't have possibly had access to, mm. but milk would have definitely been a prized commodity. And if they were up in the hills, they probably it's causing pain considering about to get up milk. for a pack of fruit snacks but or hunger. They yeah, huh? Access to evaporated milk. It was a fairly new invention from the 1850s. Evaporated by milk. Gabriel oh, Gordon. yeah. You can use that it basically checks. just like milk, but uh -huh. you can add a little bit of water if you want. And you could even use it in your coffee, like the coffee that I'm making from today's oh, yeah. sponsor, Trade. <laughs> trade is a coffee Ow. subscription service that helps you. Oi! I broke my Hello, trade Metal Grandma? On the bumpy road up here. Sir, 240 grams of flour. Oh, hold on. While you make your biscuits and gravy, for which you will need two <laughs> nice cups shot, or 240 grandma. grams of flour, one and a half mm -hmm. heaping teaspoons of cream of tartar, uh -huh. a half teaspoon of salt, Ooh. four tablespoons of butter, a heaping half teaspoon of baking soda, about three quarters of a cup or 175 milliliters of milk, either milk. regular milk or mm -hmm. evaporated milk, and that is it. And you'll notice that I cut all the ingredients in half yep. because I don't need to make that many biscuits right now. <laughs> this will still make about a dozen. So first, whisk the cream of oh, tartar true. and salt King into Fisher. the yeah, flour, yeah, yeah. and then add the butter in little pieces and work it into the flour with yep. your fingers. Yeah, cut it in with your fingers. Nice yeah. big pieces that's the, in that's the, then stir the baking the real, soda into the milk it. <laughs> and pour it into the flour mixture. I honestly don't know why she mixes it into the milk rather than just putting it with the flour, which is what Weird. it would usually be done today, but I'm gonna follow what she says. Now work Strange. the dough until it just comes together. If you need a little more milk, you can go ahead and add it, but you just wanna add enough to make the dough stick. Once you have a nice dough, set uh -huh. it onto a lightly floured surface and knead it gently for just about a minute. You don't want to overwork nice it. Shot, and then Pepsi press dog. it out oh, or roll it out to about a half inch thick. Then cut it into biscuits. Good shot. And the scraps you can kind of roll out again and cut into more biscuits. It's a very pretty Well, so Nasal Recital 2, thank, thank you so much for the follow. What a name. Then, what a name. Into a well buttered <laughs> or lard greased what a cast name. iron skillet. Then set that oh, in the oven really at 425 good. degrees Fahrenheit, 220 Celsius, and bake that, for about 15 hey, minutes. While we take I a look at that, what I appreciate that. That just that Meyer just ticked me up West to 450 it. followers on Twitch. Thank you so much. On January 24th. Oh my God! I'm 50 followers away from 500 on Twitch. What the fuck? What the fuck? How are we that close to 500 followers on Twitch, y'all? Jesus Christ! I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, wow. 1848, James Marshall, working at a wow. sawmill owned by Johann Sutter on the American River in California, found a small shiny stone in the mill race. Uh -oh. That was the first gold uh -oh. nugget found that kicked off the, the California, California gold, gold rush. rush. Here we within go. Within three years, yep. over 200,000 yep. people made their way from Akito. all over the world 
to find their fortune. Damn. <laughs> during which time most of them lost a fortune because the price of everything absolutely skyrocketed. Yep. And that included food. Including a the food, yeah. A breakfast in San Francisco that cost 15 cents in 1848 would, by the end of 1850, Don't worry, cost yeah, six dollars. Yeah, yeah. A single egg could cost a dollar. What? And a barrel of flour went from three dollars to four hundred dollars. Damn. That's about okay. Thousand dollars in today's money. What the fuck? For a barrel of for flour. A barrel of flour? So even though at Jesus. least at the beginning of the gold rush, people were picking up gold. That's off crazy. The ground, most of them weren't keeping it. <sighs> it was the people who were selling, selling things to yeah. the prospectors. As Pierre Burton said of the Klondike gold rush, the people who made money weren't the ones who found a gold mine. They found mm. the man who found a gold. They found the man who found the gold. Because yeah. Money didn't yeah. last very long, mm -hmm. and so eventually prices came back down. But basically, whenever and wherever silver or gold mm -hmm. was found, this it's same massive kind inflation, of yeah. crazy inflation took place. Good God, so that's crazy. So because of that, the foods that miners ate really ran the gamut from not so great, pretty to, um, yeah. not great. To God bless capitalism. Now, oh my God, R2. Perhaps the most famous <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. minor food, and that is the Hangtown Fry. The what? Supposedly was what you would order when you finally struck the Hangtown paper. Fry. The story goes that okay. a miner, having just found a load of gold, stumbled out of the Sierra foothills into yeah. Placerville. Though at the time the town was called Dry Diggins, though due right? to their okay. penchant for hanging people whenever oh. they did anything bad, it was more commonly known as Hangtown. Oh, there, Hangtown, I get it. Hotel, okay. Slapped a gold <laughs> nugget on the bar and ordered his favorite foods all to be fried up in one dish. Mm -hmm. That was eggs cooked in bacon grease and then topped with fried oysters. And whether or not wow. that's true, the dish did become quite okay. Popular, not just in that eggs area cooked in bacon grease and topped with fried oysters. You time. don't that say. Was Especially popular huh. in San Francisco, all right. where instead all right. of canned oysters, right. which is what many people all had right. to eat at the time, they were able to eat fresh oysters. Oysters were one of the most popular foods during this period. All right, that actually sounds really fucking good. On the New York oyster craze, which is taking place around this same time. And it was so popular to eat oysters, no matter who you were, even if you were a miner out in the wilderness, Sounds good. Eats fruit within stack. three years of the gold rush I'm starting, really hungry they had too, completely Holy eaten shit. away all of the oyster beds in and around San oh, Francisco. Oh no! So they had to start what? bringing oysters down from the Seattle area. Now, Damn, that's oysters, crazy! What the fuck? They really just really they cleaned out the San Francisco uh, Bay of their there oyster are beds? Even more Holy shit! Foods on the menu, specifically Galapagos tortoise. See, oh, turtle soup, oh. which was usually made with green turtle at the time, was oh, no. very, very popular. And it was on menus The classic show great chefs of insert place here. I have. Though, I have knives. Yes, I have. it rich, I... then pricey didn't cut nice it. Hit. You wanted something that could mm -hmm. really show your opulent wealth. And oh, the yeah. Galapagos tortoise is deemed a choice luxury, oh, no. even more than that of the green Same turtle. Tent Darwin now, while many were getting rich yeah. in gold, Caspar Hawkins realized that it was the tortoise trade that would make him his fortune. <laughs> And so in 1850, well, he and watching it, it's like, ah, oh, it's so dated now. It really is knives. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which back in San Francisco could be sold to the miners at $1,500 a piece, or about $60,000 Oh, no. I'm very happy to tell you that Damn. on his trip, he did not catch a single tortoise. He was a terrible tortoise <laughs> hunter, but many other people were much better at it. And during the 1850s, they had really wiped out most of oh, the Galapagos tortoises, and they're still not even recovered to this day. Now, eating these fancy exotic foods was not very common for most people, right? and really only happened when they discovered a big load of silver or gold. That's insane. And when they did Holy this, cow. they tended to kind of. Yeah, I know, Comey. That's fucking it was wild. It's no unusual isn't it? thing to see a company of these men, who right? had never before thought of luxury beyond a good beefsteak and glass <laughs> of whiskey, drinking their champagne at $10 a bottle and eating Damn. their tongue in sardines or warming in their smoky campfire. Their I mean, hey, if you got the money for it, fucking go for it at that point. Yeah. And while there were miners with their that bags checks. of silver and gold who could afford to eat high on the hog or High on the tortoise. High on the hog or high on the yeah. diet was not this. Our diet mm -hmm. consists of hard bread, flour, which we'd half cooked, and salt pork, with salt occasionally pork, yep. a salmon, which we purchase of the Indians. Vegetables salmon, are yeah. not to be procured. <laughs> Our drinking water comes down to us thoroughly impregnated with the mineral substances thoroughly, oh, washed through the okay. thousand cradles above us. The internet has ruined me. The internet has ruined me. Fuck. The internet has ruined me. God damn it. Anything better because most miners were not living in and around big cities like San Francisco, 
most were still looking for their riches in places like this in like Cerro Gordo. Yeah. Here, a nice supply of groceries was really hard to come by, and even when you could find Chef about basic the groceries, what you had to usually be if you wanted to buy them. In 1855, Frank Marriott wrote about a small mining town where the miners prefer buying everything at auction, presuming always that your constitution will stand a mixture of salt butter, Chinese sugar, pickles, and bad brandy. Joe Bello was an auctioneer, and long before uh -huh. his sale commenced, uh -huh. he would place a keg of butter or a bag of dried apples outside his store, and the miners would surround these luxuries like flies. Gotta and such eventually. is human no worries, nature Tapper. that no, even no in the pressure. mines no where pressure. few simpletons are to be found, there was no butter so rancid, but Joe Bello could not dispose of. <laughs> So miners Guillermo del Toro, were yeah, over even sure the did. Of basic Points to shape of water, which is why the lyrics to this 19th century miners points song to Abe Sapien from uh, Hellboy. Cabins rude, our daily food is quickly counted o'er. Beans, bread, salt, meat is all we eat, and the cold <laughs> earth is our floor. The bread mentioned in that song was one of two types. You don't the first, say. Of course, was hardtack. Hard Ah, oh, the there it is. There it is, chat. There it is. Hold on, I gotta go back. Cold earth is Hold our on. Floor. The bread mentioned in that song was one of two types. The first, of course, was hardtack. There the it is. Let's go. <laughs> so amongst the Danger bread. That Danger it bread. Became synonymous with them. Sometimes they were called sourdoughs. Sourdough. There's a reason that San Francisco sourdough. is famous sourdough for their so sourdough mm. bread. San Francisco sourdough. Hell yeah. Of this period. When you were up in the mountains Chef for Jack weeks, pointing moment. months at a time, <laughs> getting a hold of fresh yeast or even powdered yeast mm -hmm. was not easy. And so pretty much every miner above their stove hung a tin full of fermented no, dough. Just for the Doug Jones and weird prosthetics bread, don't lie. Damn, so bird. Damn, damn bird. Damn bird, but really also cold. damn, you're right. <laughs> sleep with his sourdough in his bed under his blankets <laughs> with him to keep it warm. How sweet. Now, while they were up in the mountains, miners had to rely on their basic ingredients and mm -hmm. their usually very basic cooking skills to Exceedingly, to exceedingly. To Roofing tiles. But yeah, Metal Greymon. Town, like Cerro Gordo, had grown up nearby. Terrible rations they, they ate. I had heart attack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, many actually lived I met him a few times. He's an absolute town. gen of a and human. No shade. <laughs> they usually were in the mine for 12 hours That's really day. cool, though, Bird. Just like today. That's really neat. days of work, you say, eh, let's just order in. Back then, they were like, eh, let's just go to the saloon. Just so just saloon. because yeah. you were going to a saloon or a restaurant to Slept get with a dough under his blankets to keep it warm, so the guy had a bread mind. wife. When visiting the small mining town of Angels Camp... California, that is a phrase I did not know existed until now, Tapper. Jesus. Beans and dishwater for breakfast, dishwater and beans for dinner, <laughs> and both articles warmed over for supper. Oh my Again, God. Again, this culinary monotony was usually just because it was hard to get... It's hard to get very groceries. groceries. Yeah, no, that checks. In Back in the day. These yeah. Towns. Uh -huh. Bringing uh -huh. in food took a long time, and so anything that could spoil couldn't be brought in. And that's why I can't believe I typed it, let alone sent were, it. Were canned. canned fruits, canned meats, canned vegetables. And of course, well, the congratulations, canned, Tapper. You threw me for a loop on that one. Even many saloons had to rely on these canned ingredients. Like one... That Trad wife, I sleep, bread wife, up. real and shit. Never vary. It consisted of a platter of thin, evil-tasting steak cooked until it was like leather. This was passed around the table. Amazing. Bread, coffee, amazing, Gilford. Amazing. And nearly always sugar. Sometimes this was missing. Occasionally boiled rice. Rule 34's bread wife. I can don't know. We paid nine dollars <laughs> each a week. Now, even if the steak was evil tasting, at least it was steak. At least mm. it was fresh. And many mining towns did have access to fresh meat. Here in Cerro okay, Gordo, yeah, they had yeah. cows and, and chickens, chickens yeah. and pigs and goats. And they had a lake that was nearby and a river that was nearby where they could get fresh fish and everything. And then there was, of course, big game hunting. So they ate bighorn sheep. Essentially, for most miners, what you ate came down to what you had access to. That and who was doing the cooking. That's also See, true. not only were many miners Mexican and Chinese and foreign yep. in general, yep. but many yep. of the sure saloon were. owners sure were. and restaurant owners and the cooks were Mexican, Chinese, German, German Irish, Irish, Italian. Italian. That also checks so out. Those yeah. cuisines were actually uh -huh. very popular already here in California and throughout the American West. Nice. And this very multicultural cuisine can actually be seen in a dinner that took place in really? the 1880s. It actually took place in New York. 
but it was made up mm. of a bunch of people who had been here right when the gold rush was starting. And so they would get together oh, every nice. year and eat okay. the foods that they used to eat. The champagne served was a brand from San Francisco, specially procured for the occasion. Under the caption, mm. to order if you want it, were grizzly bear steaks with frijoles, what? ribs of antelope with tortillas, carne seca with chili colorados, fried salt pork with slap. I'm sorry, I'm still focusing on grizzly bear steaks. Holy shit, dude. Damn. I'm still focusing on the grizzly bear steaks. Holy shit, y'all. Oh, that sounds real fucking tasty. Yo, I'd try that. I'd try that. Jack's stewed jackass rabbit with Moscow, <laughs> mule rump steak with hard tack, and mysterious stew a la Chinese. Now exactly what that mysterious stew Ooh, a la Chinese was, okay, I'm not okay. sure. But Chinese food in general was very, very popular amongst Humans the miners. Humans will try to eat anything. Damn right, the Tapper. Americans Damn right. would often eat a fairly new dish called mm. chop suey. It was on every menu. And then Damn, you took down a bear eating good tonight. Yeah, right, R2? China yeah, 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 yeah. That Chinese miners would eat. <laughs> Brent has found different things from China oh, here wow. in Cerro Gordo. And it's just crazy. And it's come all this way Whoa, back Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that's really cool together. looking. Wow. Now, perhaps one of the mm. most iconic foreign cuisines that came to mining here in the U.S. was mm. from the Cornish people. The oh. people of Cornwall in the southwest of oh, England were mining okay. tin and copper as far back as the early Bronze Age. So when the silver <laughs> mines back on the Colorado menu, boys. <laughs> California opened up, many a Cornishman came over to put his skills to good use. Mm -hmm. They were called Cousin Jacks, and some of the food that they Jacks. brought over had wonderfully whimsical names, like Kidley Broth, <laughs> Figgy Hobbin, and Figgy Junket and Cream. I had to look all Figgy those. Figgy Kidley Broth is a sort of onion broth <laughs> with bread chunks. Figgy Hobbin is a uh -huh. pastry stuffed with raisins. Oh. And Junket and Cream is a sort of pudding made of curdled milk and nutmeg. But oh, one interesting. Dish that they brought okay. over that I did not have to look up, and that's because it is still rather popular in many communities here in the U.S. today and back in jolly old uh -huh. England. And that is the famous Cornish pie. Cornish patty, ah, which is yep, there it is. A hand yep. pie filled with beef, onion, rutabaga, or swede, and potato. Interesting. Fortunate indeed is the miner so yeah. steeped in connubial Aye, bliss very as good, to possess very good, a very better good. half, mm -hmm. who, in her loving care, as a token of her affection. This is a pasty or two in the lunchbox of her minor spouse. A letter from home. Wild West Hot Pockets. Such a setup. Unfortunately, nice, my Gelford. better half is nice. not here to make the pasty, <laughs> so I'm going to just have to stick with my biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy. So I better make that gravy. So for this, you can start Let's with go. any greasy meat you might have. You can use sausage mm -hmm. or bacon, but I'm going to use the meat that most miners had access to, and that is salt, salt pork. pork. Now, it needs to be rinsed to get some of the salt out as much as you can and then chopped up really, really fine, and then put it in a skillet and cook it until most of the fat has melted. Ooh. Once it's cooked, remove it from the pan. Look at all that pork fat, chat. Look at all then that pork fat. we're going to sprinkle in some flour. Now, how much you use really is kind of based on how thick you want your gravy, but typically mm -hmm. it's about the same as the amount of One to one. Stir one it all one. in, making sure there aren't any lumps, and cook it for just a couple of minutes until it starts to thicken, and then add some of that evaporated milk. Now, one thing I did find is that if you use evaporated milk, it has lower a water lower consistency, uh, yeah. water consistency than regular milk. And so it makes the flour mixture kind of seize up. But if you just keep whisking, it finally turns back into a nice smooth gravy. Ooh. Then you can go ahead and add some of that pork back in and dish it up on your biscuits. And here nice. we are. Biscuits and gravy for an Old West miner. Let's Ooh, that looks shot. good. Hell yeah. I love biscuits and gravy. Same. Big same. You do Big not same. need to add more salt to that. <laughs> you got a little pepper. But it is plenty salty because of that pork. Yep. Now, the biscuits the salt did not pork, rise yeah. as much as I would have expected, especially because I'm at like 8,000 feet uh, elevation. It's Max from editing, <laughs> and I have been racking my brain trying to figure out why my biscuits didn't rise. And as I'm editing, I realized that the milk that I put into the actual recipe did not have any baking soda. Oh For some no! Reason, I, can't I made two bowls of milk, and the one that went in was the one without any baking soda. Max! So, just letting you know, it wasn't the recipe that screwed up, it was the Max that screwed up. I made a mistake, and there it is. So if you make this recipe, just add the baking oh, soda. Oh my goodness. It work out just fine. Oh my okay. goodness. Um, anyway, luckily, they did still taste really good, so I'll let that Max tell you about that. But the flavor is excellent. So are they the best Amazing. biscuits and gravy I've ever Amazing. tasted? No, my grandpa's biscuits and gravy are the best I've ever tasted, but 
If I was a miner out for days at a time on a mountain, that would have been a darn good breakfast. Well, there you go. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, go ahead and make them or go buy some biscuits and gravy somewhere. One of my favorite dishes. And check out Hell the yeah. channel, Ghost Town Living. Man couldn't get his biscuits up. Oh my god, Akira. Oh my goodness.